Solving Punnett squares, the secrets to solving any problem. Things to remember, Punnett squares are used to figure possible genotypes and phenotypes of offspring. Genes don't always work the same way. There are different modes of or par patterns of inheritance. Use the mnemonic MGAPS PO. Before continuing, here are a couple terms. Genotype versus phenotype. The genotype is the allele combination of an organism, also the letter combination. And phenotype is a physical appearance of an organism. Genes are sections of DNA that contain um, instructions to build a protein that will reveal our traits. And then remember that alleles are the different forms of a gene. So if the gene is eye color, um, there are the alleles brown eyes and green eyes. So heterozygous down here is when alleles for the same trait are different. Big R, little R, big T, little T, big G, little G. In other words, you have a capital and a lowercase, dominant and recessive. Um, but when they're both the same, uh, like both lowercase or both uppercase, then those are called homozygous. They're the same size or the same type. Then you have purebred versus hybrid. Purebred is just the same thing as homozygous. Hybrid is heterozygous. Dominant means the trait that or the allele that overpowers and is dominant. It, it stands out. It hides the recessive. And like you can see here, the little cat in the jar. The recessive one is the one that's being hidden. It's actually there, but not appearing. It's not dominant. Can we predict what your children will look like in the future? Kind of. Um, at least we know the possible chances of a certain trait appearing. So why do we use Punnett squares? Well, we, we do use them to predict the possible genotypes and phenotypes of offspring. Chances of a certain trait or disease appearing. Um, so maybe it's used for medical and family use. Um, to explain how traits are passed down, and we get percentages, ratios, or fractions. Remember that Punnett squares don't tell you how many kids you're going to have. This doesn't say you're going to have four kids. It doesn't say your first one's going to have a certain disease, or the second one's going to have this or that. All it is is gives you a percentage of the chances, the likelihood, also called the probability, that a child will be born with something. MGAPS PO, here's a way to remember it. The mode of inheritance, genes, alleles, parents, sex cells, Punnett squares, and offspring. A good way to remember it is my great aunt Patty sold pizzas online. Okay, so M is mode of inheritance. Um, there's three forms you're going to see on the CST. One is called autosomal dominance. This is what we've been used to. It's called the complete or classical dominance type. And that's when just genes work by being dominant or recessive. And you remember that, and it's very simple. We just use letters like big P, little P, cross with big P, little P. I mean, this is a form we've been used to, and then the dominant will overpower. And again, why do they call it, why do they call it autosomal dominance? They're trying to confuse us, right? No, well, it just means that the autosomes are the first chromosomes, 1 through 22. The sex chromosomes are the last pair, 23. And autosomes are focused on the other ones, which are pretty much homologous chromosomes. So what that means is that it can, it can equally be found in male and female, and that's what's shown by this diagram. Equal chance to appear in males and females. But then when we talk about sex-linked, this is different now. Remember sex-linked, um, we have an X and Y chromosome, and the X has more information, as you can see right here. It has more genes. And so a lot of diseases will be carried here. Um, and remember, the, the thing is that in males, the you know the since they don't have another X chromosome, they just have one X, if that one X they get from their mom it has a disease on it, then they will have the disease. It's not like females who have two X chromosomes and they get the protection here. Just like in this example, she's protected with the dominant form, but the boy won't have that protection. He'll have the disease. So whenever we do sex link traits, we always write them in this form. Don't forget that. We always put X and then a subscript or a superscript and, and that'll indicate how we're, we're going to show how those traits are being passed down. So that's how we do those. And then incomplete dominance is when the traits blend. So the first one is genes. How many genes? Um, use the letter Q's in the problem to figure out how many. If you see one letter, for example, they're talking about big E, little e. Well, that's one letter. They're talking about E. So that means it's one gene. Um, when they're talking about two letters, for example, E and F, um, they're talking about two genes. And you're going to see with four alleles. Um, you can use trait information. Maybe just keep reading. And then if you hear them talk about one thing, like eye color, and that's it, then that's one gene. And they'll usually give you the alleles. Sometimes they're talking about eye color and height or something else. And so then that's two genes. 
And when we're talking about one gene, we're going to use a monohybrid cross. That means there's one gene, there's two alleles, and we're going to use the one with four boxes. If it's dihybrid, that means there's two genes, four alleles, and we're going to use the one with the dihybrid with 16 boxes. The first thing we do is, um, or the second thing we do, A, is we find the alleles. Which one is dominant, which one's recessive? So you're going to find one that's the capital and one that's the lowercase. So designate your alleles. And then we figure out what the parent genotypes are. And this you could just figure out by reading the problem. It'll say, for example, what are the possible offspring from a heterozygous tall cross with a short parent? And based on that information, you could figure out the genotypes of the parents. For example, the heterozygous tall would be big T, little t, and short would be little t, little t. Then the next step, it would be to figure out the sex cell genotypes. And remember, if there's one gene, all you have to do is separate. If there's two genes, then you do FOIL to figure out the sex cell. It's only one gene here. How do I know that? Because they only have one letter, T, that we're dealing with. So we're going to just se separate, again, the loss segregation. There you go. And those are the sex cells. And then Punnett square. And that means you set up your Punnett square. You put the sperm on the top and the eggs on the side. And I'm just going to carry these in here. I'm going to carry the eggs down here. And then the next step is figure out the offspring by fertilizing them. Okay, so then we, are, we know how this goes. We go uh, across and down, across and down. Notice that I'm putting the capital one in front, across and down. So big, little t, little t, and then little t, little t. And then we can figure out um, what the offspring are. Then we check for understanding. So right now, pause the video and put these in order. All right, here are the answers, and this is what you want to put in your worksheet. Pause it and copy it down in your worksheet. Moving on now. Here's a sample problem. Fill it in your notes. Let's read it together, and you're going to write it down exactly where it says write the question. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disorder passed down through families in which certain nerve cells in the brain waste away or degenerate. What is a probable offspring from a male who is a heterozygous for the disease and a female who does not have the disease? So you want to pause it right now and copy that down. So moving on, what do we do first? Well, we figure out the mode of inheritance. It's autosomal dominant. How do I know that? Well, they told us that. Even if they didn't tell us that, um, it's usually just autosomal. And you can figure out if the trait is dominant or recessive by reading on. Um, how many genes? Well, it's one gene. I know that because we're just talking about Huntington's disease. We're not talking about height and eye color. We're only talking about one thing, which is Huntington's disease. So I'm going to use a monohybrid cross with four boxes. Again, there's one gene, two alleles, and the one with four boxes. So what are the alleles? Well, they told us that the disease is dominant. So I'm going to choose big H to be the allele for Huntington's disease because it's dominant, capital. And little h is going to be healthy, not having the disease. And then we figure out who the parents are. And if we read it carefully, they said that the male is heterozygous for the disease. And that the female has, does not have the disease. So heterozygous for the disease, meaning one capital, one lowercase, remember? So we're going to put big H, little h. And the female, the mom, doesn't have the disease. So the only way that could ha be possible is if there's two little H's, right? Um, in case you forgot, if we have a big H here, then the big H overpowers because it's dominant, and then it would have the disease. So the only form has to be two little H's. And then we figure out the sex cells. There's only one gene here because we're just talking about the letter H, and therefore we're going to separate, and that's it. So let's get the sperm cells here. Let's get the genotypes for the egg cells. Now we have the sex cells. The next step after that is we figure out the Punnett square. That's what P stands for. So let's go ahead and put the sperm right there. Let's put the eggs over here. And now the last step is to fin figure out your offspring by fertilizing. Again, down and across, down and across, down and across, and down and across. Remember the capital goes in front. And then when we do this, we figure out Okay, what are these offspring? 
Well, they have big H in front. Big H, I know, is dominant. What did big H stand for? Oh, Huntington's disease. So these two out of four, that's one half or 50% have the disease. How about these, little h, little h? Oh, those are healthy, so 50-50.